three months ago, I found and bought an abandoned Superbird, and I've never done a Mopar build on the channel, and I've always wanted to. Now, the Superbird is a replica, but from here on out, I'm just gonna call it a Superbird. When I bought this car, I knew it needed some work. It didn't have a motor, it didn't have a transmission, the car was rusted, and almost everything needed to be replaced, but I had the body of a Superbird, and I was so excited for that. The car is at a body shop where it has been for the last three months, and it's taking a lot longer than expected because there's a lot of work that needs to be done on the car. Truthfully, a lot more than I signed up for. The more we dig into it, the worse it gets. And I'm starting to question if this build is worth continuing or not. So let's take the Camaro, let's head down to the body shop and let's take a look ourselves at what's going on. I think I need to get some cup holders. God, though, can you imagine this glass just broke when I did that? I wore my waterproof mascara today. So when my eyes burn from the 85, when I'm sitting and idling, it won't mess up my makeup. With that being said, cold start for the girls. <laughs> fuel center isn't working, I'm not getting a reading, so I'm gonna go top off on some E85 right now on my way to the body shop. This car just died on me and it won't start. I think the car might have just run out of gas, but we have a nice um, stranger helping us push. Sean's pushing, the guys are back there, and let's go. Oh, thank God for kind people. <laughs> It's a really good thing on the way to the gas station, I was just babying it and didn't do any tunnel rips because I would have been stranded a lot sooner than <laughs> literally right there. I think I gotta get the fuel gauge working on the car. Dude, E is so much cheaper than regular gasoline. Look at that, 2.8 versus 5.3, it cost me $40 to fill up. I was wondering why it stopped burning my eyes. It ain't got no gas in it. That's some good E, guys. Your title should have been I built an exhaust that sprays me directly in the face. I, I think I'm gonna change the exhaust. Race car. I can't do it. Race this. car. <laughs> You'll get used to it eventually. <laughs> Is there like, am I gonna lose my vision eventually? Nah. <laughs> oh God. All right, real time gauges. Look how nice this is. All right, fuel pressure, great. We'll keep an eye on that one driving. <laughs> Superbird. Before buying any car, I always get a vehicle history report to make sure that there are no hidden surprises that I would regret later. In order to do that, I turned to today's sponsor, Car Vertical. I can't stress this enough, you should never buy a vehicle or sell a vehicle without getting a car history report, and that is what Car Vertical is used for. Car Vertical is a service that provides vehicle history checks in more than 25 countries with super intuitive and easy to follow reports. Their reports can show if a car had an accident in the past, if its odometer was rolled back, whether or not it was stolen. It may even show pictures of how the car looked after the accident or from an auction and many other useful things. I'm in the market for a Hemi. Not pre-build to stock, but for the Superbird. I was looking at a couple cars at auction. Of course, I had to run a car vertical before bidding. I am in the market for buying a salvaged charger or a Vice. So that's when I will go to car vertical. All I have to do is enter the VIN number and get a report. It's as simple as that. And you can get 10% off instantly if you use my code. I need to know that the motor and drivetrain are good. Looking at title check, it's salvage title. Glad I checked that, I already knew it, but even if you're buying a clean titled vehicle, you always wanna run a report, you never know. It's also really cool that you can always check the specs and equipment so I know exactly what specs this car has. Down here I have the timeline of all the records of ownership and title changed as well as take a look at this crashed it sold it title changed now it's for sale so go check your car or one you may be thinking of buying with car vertical hit the link in the description below or use code amelia for a 10 percent discount and thank me later when you save money on the car you're about to buy or save a lot of money on a huge mess you shouldn't buy speaking of cars you shouldn't buy <laughs> let's get back to the super bird <laughs> Give him a 
warning first. <laughs> he wanted to hear it. Do you, you forget you have side exit. You got cannons out the side of this thing. Well, we're here. <laughs> What's up, yo? <laughs> That was the most motorcycle thing ever. Sup, follow me. <laughs> Can't see. I'm blind. I'm blind. They saying I drove a getaway car, but I cannot see. I'm legally blind. We're here at Huntington Beach Chrysler, where the Superbird is behind this door. We're going to see how bad it is and what kind of condition the car is in currently. There we go. Oh my God, you guys. My buddy Baker called me saying he found this abandoned Superbird and offered to sell it to me and that's how we are here today. We don't know how long this has been sitting, but based on all the rust, this Superbird has been sitting for a very long time. The car needs a lot of work and just about every single square inch of this car is gonna have to be replaced. By looking at it, you can see this has been replaced, this has been replaced, the quarters have been replaced and upgraded to a 1970 quarter before it had the 69, so it didn't have the vents in it and it wasn't true to what the Superbird was. We need new taillights, new bezels. You can see some rot repair that was done here. Not to mention while we were here doing the fab work, Greg over here at Huntington Beach put in mini tubs so we can at least fit a fat nasty tire because you guys know me you know I love my horsepower gotta have wheel tubs right yeah of course better him than us it took us so long to do the, the mini tubs on the Camaro <laughs> finding a new trunk lid for less than three thousand dollars has been so hard the trunk <laughs> It's not that it's bad, it's that it's completely the wrong piece to fit with the 70 rear. And you can see all of this has been replaced inside of there too. And with... Sounds like a BMW. There's also a lot of things that are hard to find and purchase, like these rear quarter extensions. This was such a hard piece to find. As we continue to walk around the car and we continue to look, the worse it continues to get. Like. This whole rear glass channel is all rusted. So in order to do this build right, we have to replace it. We have to fix a lot of this. Basically the only thing we're not replacing is the roof. <laughs> this door is probably gonna stay, but on the other side, this is the wrong window. They put the wrong window in the door. <laughs> so the windows have to get replaced, all the glass. We're basically keeping the doors and the roof and <laughs> windshield wipers. <laughs> and the inside. So Greg has put in so much incredible work. All the floors have been replaced. They're no longer rusted. You can see the mini tubs from back here. A couple rotten pieces were replaced as well. And of course we're gonna need all new interior, but one step at a time. We're also gonna need new brakes, a new rear end, a new motor, because as you can see, there isn't even one inside of the car. You guys can see the primer inside of the engine bay. Those were holes in rust that were also cut out that have been replaced in order to kind of have like a super clean engine bay when this car is done. I'm really trying to have this done perfectly. It looks like a mess right now, but we're putting in a lot of time and effort to make this look like it almost rolled off the factory lot just with significantly more horsepower. Power. Mine might be a thousand horsepower wide body Plymouth Superbird. Others might be different. This fiberglass isn't a perfect fit and something tells me that no matter what through the rest of this <laughs> There's a lot of work that needs to be done on this. What I was saying was I think I'm forever going to find sand in this car no matter what even when it's done but I see there's, there's some work that needs to be done in order to get everything mounted and correctly. You break, you buy. <laughs> I think I already bought. Oh, yeah. Let's raise the car up so we can look underneath because it only gets worse from here. I'm dumb, but I'm not an idiot. When I bought this car, I did look underneath it to make sure that all the structural pieces were okay. I did know that there was a lot of rust under the car. So let me show you how bad this rust is. Basically anything you see with primer has been replaced because of rot. I feel like I'm looking at some like Pirates of the Caribbean under ship. Rot, 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 rot. Completely replaced and Right. 
This whole rear end's gotta be replaced. The suspension's gonna be replaced. The leaf springs are gonna go. We're saying goodbye to that 18th century buggy suspension. And as you guys can see the front too, all this is gonna have to be replaced as well. New suspension up here. We're probably gonna have to cut out these buckets for anything modern that's gonna fit this car too. So like I said, just about every inch of this car will have to be fixed, replaced, or hasn't been fixed or replaced yet. Everyone's been asking for updates on this car and this is what's going on. My vision for this car is a resto mod Superbird with some Hartford custom touches. So I think you guys, you know what that means. I do need you guys' help with something though. Do we go with a supercharged red eye engine or do we go with an NA V10 out of a Viper? Eh, 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 I don't know. Either way, it's getting a T56, but let me know on engine because I'm torn. Red eye or V10 from Viper? What do you actually think? Modern Hemi. I think it'll have more of that old school sound. Yeah, but. Except for the what? 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 <laughs> <laughs> that is a good sound. I love that sound. But I also just love like a naturally aspirated like scream to cars too. It may be a little different. No one would expect it. Sean? 170. Can you get that as a crate? Probably next year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you or probably. honestly, I'm sure it's not gonna be long before they start getting just, sent to Copart, but. Just put pistons and rods in a red eye. It's the same thing, right? <laughs> Comment below, let me know what you guys think. While we're here, I do know how much original Mopar stuff goes for. So that rear end, I'll make you a smoking deal. How much you want for it? Four grand for sale. Come and get it. I'll even include the shocks. But for real guys, I call people for parts if I can find them and if I can find them they want so much money for it mopar tax i'm telling you and like that we're out <laughs> literally a penny off from having all even numbers my ocd could never we have found out that the camaro does about five miles to the gallon not bad on e <laughs> yeah so it, that, that's eight is, miles yeah. to the gallon on pump gas yes, right <laughs> there's no other way i'd rather spend my sunday and i mean that <laughs> this is fun what was the point of these things to begin with? Thank you guys so much for all your continued love and support, E-Crew. We out here with love. Bye! <laughs> Hornet's nest at some point? Can't tell. <laughs> all original Mopar tie-down. I'll let it go for $2,000.